What's up everybody, it's Victon here with another League Starter Build Guide for 3.13 Ritual League. For this one, we're going to be going over a Spectre League Start Build that also uses the newly buff Skeleton Mages. Even with the heavy nerfs that Spectre's got, I do think I've managed to make a build work here that's going to be quite solid as a League Starter, with it costing a very a little amount of currency, and still manages to pump out 7 million boss DPS and 5 million mapping DPS. That and 6,000 life with 74% physical damage mitigation and capped elemental and chaos resistance, you're going to be very tanky. Definitely enough to be easily a speed farming red tier maps in the in-game content and again with very little investment. All the things that you need for a good league starter build. Now, the best thing about this build in the reason that I'm actually making this is because I do have an in-game Spectre build I'm very interested in playing in Ritual League. The in-game version of this build used to have 80 million Shaper DPS, but now with the nerfs, it's down to 34 million Shaper DPS. And that just goes to show you guys how heavy these nerfs hit. But luckily for us, 34 million DPS is still incredibly solid and is going to destroy all the in-game bosses in just seconds anyway. So even with the nerfs, it's not too bad. If you're interested in learning more about that secret sauce build, definitely stay tuned on my channel and look out for that build guide here in the next week or so, probably a little bit less than that. But yeah, basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be going through the passive skill tree and path of building along with the skill gems and items that we're going to be using. And then I'm going to walk you guys through the leveling guide that I've put together for you guys in the note section of the path of building so you guys can level up this build as easily and smoothly as possible. After that, I'm going to show you guys how to get the custom loot filter I made for this build to help you guys level up. And lastly, I'm going to walk you guys through the trade website links to all the gear that you're going to need for this build, which I do provide in the note section of the path of building. Also, as always, before we get into this guide, if you end up enjoying this guide, do consider subscribing, hitting that like button for more content just like this. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, I do have a link to my Patreon in the description of this video where you can subscribe and get some juicy benefits like access to my sub-only Discord, where you have an awesome community of folks just like you are ready and willing to chat about tons of different builds and theory craft. And I personally am in there quite frequently as well, doing build reviews for people all the time. And that or just come by my Twitch channel, hang out with us, ask questions. I am always happy to help you guys. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the path of building. All right, so like I said, we're going to go over the passive skill tree here first. Now, I am going to do a little bit shorter of a guide, so I'm not going to go over every single note here, but I will go over the more important things. So as you can note, first off, we're not getting any cluster jewels. We're trying to stay as cheap as possible. So mainly here, we're just getting a ton of life and a ton of minion damage. Very, very simple Spectre build. There's really nothing crazy uh, about this build. The only thing is that's a little bit different from maybe some other Spectre builds. Uh, well, maybe two things. One, we are going with Elemental Equilibrium. So Elemental Equilibrium is going to be shredding resistances to... So let, I'll give you an example, right? So we're going to be using Armageddon Brand. So that does fire damage. So when I put Armageddon Brand down and it attacks a enemy with fire damage, that enemy is going to gain 25% fire resistance. So that's bad, but they're going to lose 50% cold and lightning resistance. And that is very good for us. That's actually very good for our skeleton mages, which do both types of those damage, but also very good for our specters, which are slave drivers, and they do lightning damage. That coupled with the fact that we are going to be using in our skills, where is it here? Elemental weakness. So we're just going to be shredding a lot of uh, elemental resistances in this build to help with our damage. So that's why it's actually we're going to have quite a bit of damage without a lot of investment because we're shredding a lot of elemental resistances. That's a cheap way of getting some extra damage. And the last thing here uh, for kind of unique things about the build, I guess that most people don't necessarily do is Necromantic Aegis. So all bonuses from Equip Shield also apply to your minions instead of you. Uh, nothing crazy about that one. It, it's been done before, but I do definitely like it, especially when you go with the Victario's Charity Shield. So basically, your minions are going to be sharing power and frenzy charges with each other, and basically they're going to be full on frenzy and power charges all the time. So lots of extra damage there. And after that, we're really just getting a whole bunch of life and some damage nodes here and there, some damage here, some damage here, here. Uh, we do pick up some minion reserved, I'm sorry, some mana reserved right here. As you can tell, we are a little bit low on mana. We do try and get a, an extra aura in this build, so we have a, a good amount of auras 
uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So getting these four nodes right here definitely help you be able to actually cast your skill. So uh, definitely something you should be picking up. Uh, now, one thing that I actually forgot to mention for you guys, just so you guys know, I do have a kind of leveling path for you guys. Uh, so you can see like right here, we go from a level one character all the way up to a max character. And you can just follow this if you guys want to help you kind of level up. So one other thing, uh, let's do. So let's go ahead and talk about the jewel here. So Dead Reckoning. Uh, this got buffed for the Skeleton Mages. So if you see here, uh, can summon up to can summon up to 15 skeletal mages with summon skeletons. So instead of doing your regular skeletons that normally do melee damage, you're actually going to be summoning skeleton mages, which are actually very good, and they're going to go really well with our slave die respecters because they deal elemental damage. Uh, so lots of cold, lots of lightning, and they do fire, but we're, we're shredding that uh, the cold and lightning uh, with elemental equilibrium, so that's what we're focusing on. So lots of damage from this dead reckoning jewel now this can drop very early on in the league i am not sure about how much this is going to cost because it's getting buffed i'm not sure if there's going to be a ton of uh people wanting this jewel if there are then the price might go up if people aren't really wanting it the price is always very low it's usually only a couple chaos and you can get it very early on so this is gonna actually i would suggest this is your first purchase that you get if the cost is like under five, five chaos, if it's anything over five chaos, maybe even 10 chaos, if it's over 10 chaos, I probably wouldn't get it until maybe your second or third item. Uh, but it is very, very good. And that's a whole lot of damage. You can see over here that that is 328,000 damage and you have 15 of them. So quite a lot of damage right there. And that is with, we'll talk about this a little bit, but that is with your single target setup. Where is this? Uh, so that's with slower projectiles. Uh, there are greater multiple projectiles. Essentially, your clear speed and mapping is a little bit less, 188, but that's still quite a bit. That's about 2.5 million uh, damage, so very, very strong. So let's go back to the skill tree here and talk about one more thing before we move on to these skills. Just so you guys know, we are getting an unending hunger. Uh, it's very, very strong for mid to late game specters this is so much damage i can't even explain to you guys how much damage an unending hunger uh, adds to your 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 slave drivers it's it's so crazy these are expensive uh, i'm curious how expensive it's going to be this league since the specters got nerfed so hard and i'm going to guess that not a lot of people are going to be playing specters just because they're scared because of the nerf which is understandable um, but personally, like I said, I, I've done this build, uh, and, and it's super, super strong and the damage is there. So I'm fine with this build. So I'm hoping that this jewel is going to be a little bit cheaper than normal and you guys can pick it up pretty easy. Usually they are anywhere between 100 and 150 chaos in the first few days of the league. And they dip from that uh, a little bit and then they go back up. They kind of do a roller coaster. So, uh, hopefully we can get you guys a good price on unending hunger. Uh, but just so you know, y'all don't have to get this probably until maybe late yellow maps and starting in your red maps. And this actually doesn't affect the damage numbers over here. So even if you didn't have it, this is your real DPS. What is going to affect it is when you're mapping, it's 50% chance to gain Soul Eater for 20 seconds on kill for your Spectres. So Soul Eater just makes them go crazy with crazy cast speed. Uh, so very, very good. And that's just extra damage on top of the already damage that we have. So... Very simple tree here. Let's go ahead and move on to our skills. Again, you guys can just kind of check this one out yourself and go through here. Um, I'm not gonna go over everything in super detail, but we will kind of look at everything. Um, this is a very basic setup for your skeleton mages. Like I said, we do have a an AOE build, which is this one right here with the greater multiple. And then we have a bossing you to swap out the slower projectiles for greater multiple projectiles, both green. Uh, so you can just swap it out very easily. Uh, and if you're, you're probably gonna be using a tabula rasa, so it really doesn't even matter. But uh, just for later, since they're both green, uh, that is pretty solid right there. So very good clear speed with that skill. Uh, the race specter is actually gonna be in your helmet. We do have a wraith lord. And that is the number two item that I would actually purchase with this build. Number one being that dead reckoning, so you can get your skeleton mages up as soon as possible. 
And your second item that you should purchase is a Wraith Lord. These are usually very cheap. They're under five chaos on the first day, so you can easily get this super, super easy, and it's very good. It's gonna give you plus two levels to your socketed minion gems, which are gonna be your specters, and your specters get some extra life, which is really gonna help because specters got nerfed, and their gem level, uh, I'm sorry, not their gym level, their monster level got nerfed a little bit. So what that means is they're not going to have as much life. So any more life that we can get our specters is very, very good. So this is going to be a very solid helmet that you're probably going to use for, for quite a while. Um, so just even on a four link, you can see over here, let's go to our specters. Uh, so we have three specters with this uh, and they're doing 716,000 damage. Uh, so pretty respectable that's about two i think it's like about 2.3 2.4 million uh, damage between these so not too bad at all these are mainly your bossing setup right here because we do have conk effect uh whereas your set your skeletons mages are kind of more your your clear speed with that greater multiple projectiles so that's kind of how i have it set up here uh, just the normal other basic stuff with convocation flesh offering desecrate um we have a zombie set up here with Feeding Frenzy, that's the big thing, so we can get the Feeding Frenzy buff to all of your minions, and we want to make sure these dudes actually live, so we have Minion Life and Elemental Army, and the big thing about Elemental Army is, since we are actually using Wrath, uh, and as you can see here, nearby allies deal 18 to 286 lightning damage with attacks, so that goes to your raised zombies, so they're actually going to be doing a decent amount of lightning damage, and with elemental army that's going to give the monsters that your zombies attack not only feeding frenzy but also lightning exposure so another uh 10 lightning elemental resistance shred so just even more damage it's a good little setup right there uh, now we have our curse right here with armageddon brand hex touch and elemental weakness uh, pretty solid the reason we're doing that and not just self-casting elemental weakness is because we want that armageddon brand to be proccing elemental equilibrium for all of the shredding to lightning and cold damage uh, so very very good setup here moving on we have flame dash uh, just as your movement skill and we also have wrath generosity uh, so very very good for your slave drivers that's so much lightning damage for your slave drivers uh, and also pretty solid for your other guys as well, since they are doing some lightning damage. Uh, so pretty solid there. Uh, we do have a summon chaos golem. Uh, you can really choose a chaos golem or you can choose a really any of the golems, but I personally choose chaos golem. I think maybe the second best one would be a uh, stone golem for some life regen. We have about 613 right now, so it's already pretty solid. Let's see what it goes up to here. Laggy computer, come on. So Summon Stone Golem, it goes up to about 729, so that's still pretty solid. I personally prefer the Summon uh, Chaos Golem, just so you can get a little bit extra physical damage reduction. That's just a personal preference. Uh, for your other ring, um, we're going to have... We're definitely not going to have a ring right there, so I'll, I'll make sure I fix that for you guys. But that is one of the things that we're going to have in the build is Summon Skitterbots, and our last aura is going to be Vitality. So those are the three auras that you're going to be running. Uh, it looks like I just have it in the wrong spot. No big deal there. So moving on to our items, you're going to tell that this is very, very cheap. Uh, let's go through all of these items. I think this is probably, let's see, let's see. I think you can self farm the tabula rasa doing rituals so i would say maybe going into the coast since it's the highest chance to get a tabula rasa running the zone the coast uh, and doing rituals there there may be another strategy but i feel like that might work to get you guys a tabula uh, instead of paying for it but if you do pay for it it's usually about 25 to 30 chaos on the first day and then it goes down a little bit from there uh, but everything else is going to be like five chaos each Victorious Charity is usually only about 5 to 10 Chaos, uh, 10 for the, the good rolls. Like I said, that Wraith Lord is usually about 3 to 4 Chaos. Uh, the Darkness and Throne is like 1 Chaos. Uh, the Unning Hunter is your, your big one, like I said, but you don't have to get that until you get into the yellow and red tier maps. So you're going to save up for that once you purchase all of these super cheap items. Uh, I'm not Again, I'm not sure how much the Dead Reckoning is going to be. I feel like it's probably going to be still cheap. Even if they're going to be a little bit more expensive than normal, I can't see them going for more than like 15, 20 chaos. And it is pretty central to the build, so definitely save up for that pretty early on. Other than that, though, we really just have kind of super poopy gear. We have lots of gear with just life and resistances. And do note that anywhere I can, I try and get chaos resistance. And the reason we're doing that, again, is so we can 
at least attempt to cap our chaos resistance. So we're very close here. Uh, just a few more better items and we would be capped on all of our elemental resistances and all of our chaos resistances. And that's with terrible gear too. So, uh, and you can actually kind of tell as we go down here, um, there are a couple things like uh, you can see right here, these boots. This is not mandatory, but anytime that you can get plus one to levels of the array specter gem it's gonna be huge it's more damage but it's also more life and like i said they lost a lot of damage and they lost a lot of life so we don't want them dying so anytime you can get plus one to all race specter gems you can get that there so you can get them on boots you can get it on the amulet right here you see a plus one to level of intelligence skill gems and from what I understand, you can also get those from the Maven Orb, which I'm pretty sure is going to be pretty expensive. So that's not really a budget thing, but it's just a kind of one thing to, to think about as you're playing this build. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do with the Maven Orb uh, to get even more gem levels for your Spectres. And that's what hurts the Spectres the most right now with their nerf was those gem levels. So we can counteract that with some new gear that would be pretty cool so moving on to our rings super simple here life resistances and then we have that darkness and throne good thing about this is it buffs the jewels inside of it which we have minion ones very basic here just life and minions deal additional damage use a minion skill recently so a whole bunch of damage using this belt and a pretty good amount of life as well so one thing i do want to mention to you guys do not negate so one thing I want to mention to you guys is do not neglect your flasks. Flasks have so much defense to them. It's super crazy to me that a lot of people just kind of skip over your flasks, or even if they have them, they just don't use them. Uh, personally, I have them on one, two, three, four, and I have my uh, my forbidden taste, my life flask on my last one, and I just hit one, two, three, four all the time, and I make sure these are up 100% of the time I'm mapping. And it's just, it's so much extra defenses. There's really no reason that you should not be doing this. And ideally also one that has armor on it as well. And watch this, I'm gonna give you guys an example. I'm gonna turn off all my flasks here and we're gonna look at our physical damage mitigation. We only have 20%. If we turn our flasks on, that goes up to 74%. So it's absolutely huge. And something you should never really kind of put in the back of your mind that needs to be in the front of your mind you need to be using your flasks all the time it's just so much defenses uh definitely don't make sure uh definitely make sure that you you don't forget to do this so that's pretty much all of our our, our gear here um it is super cheap everything is super super cheap um like i said probably under 20 chaos and you can get this full set and you're doing about 7 million dps you've got just under 6,000 life you have pretty good physical damage reduction you have capped elemental and capped chaos res uh so pretty nice in my opinion as a league starter uh, so let's move on to the next section here it's this note section if you guys want to click up here on this note section i have a full leveling guide for you guys so you can see how to level it up from level one all the way up until you have all of your gems at which point you should be just absolutely cruising doing so much damage that you'll be uh, just fine to kind of progress from there uh, so do take a look at this i'm not going to go over it specifically because it is quite a lot of information but do note that it is here in the notes section uh, and i would suggest you guys use it i actually use it myself when i play these builds uh, i have my little notes and i go through them uh, and play up the build and it just kind of makes it to where i don't have to use my brain i just look at the notes easy peasy uh, so check those out uh, also down here i have a little section called extra bits so we'll go over that real quick uh, basically what it is is the leveling loot filter so let me grab that for you guys real quick um right here so this is my loot filter that i have custom built for leveling up summoners uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to follow it. I wouldn't suggest copying it because if you copy it, that means you have to manually do any adjustments that I make later on. Whereas if you hit follow, it will automatically update based off of whenever I update the build. So for example, I updated it last night and I actually have to update it tomorrow morning apparently because there's something changing. So I need to make sure I update it for you guys. So if you hit follow, y'all will get that update automatically. So hit that follow button. Basically the reason you're using this uh, is because anytime you have an item that drops that has the colors that you need for specifically for the skills you have on this build uh, like for example a blue beam will hop up into the sky and you'll know hey pick up this item it's got the bright links it's got the right colors and again it just makes it a whole lot smoother to actually level up so try and help you out with that guys uh, i actually use that myself so it, it's a fantastic little loot filter uh, and i quite enjoy it 
So moving on here, like I said, I have all of the trade website um, links here and I'm gonna put all of these in that note section as well. This is basically all the gear that you're gonna be needing for your build. Uh, so I just put it in one single place that so you kind of just click on it and it's super easy for you guys to pull it up. So I thought that would help you guys out. So number one, most important item that you wanna get is a dead reckoning jewel. Again, I do not know how much this is gonna cost. They are usually very cheap. Um, but I'm, I'm just not 100% sure. I still think if it's under 10 chaos, maybe even under 15 chaos, it should be your first purchase item. I would, however, say if you get all the way to level 34 uh, and you haven't been able to afford this, which is probably most people, I would go ahead and purchase the next one, which is the Wraith Lord Helmet. These are usually about three chaos, four chaos, which most people can find before you get to 34. And most people, when they sell it for three or four chaos, they'll take like uh, random stuff. Like if you find a fusing orb and a couple alchemies, most people will take that. So even if you have only one chaos and maybe some alchemies and some fusings, go ahead and offer it to them and they'll probably take it. Uh, but that's very big for a level 34 to get plus two to level of socketed minion gems. That's huge for damage. Uh, and then this one, uh, the Spectre Maximum Life, again, like I said, because they have less life, that's actually really, really big. And it's going to make your Spectres pretty much not die. Uh, but if you don't have this, your Spectres are going to die all the time. So very important item. Um, I would say between this one and this one, these are your definite first two items that you're going to want to buy in this build. Moving on to the next one is, of course, just a Tabula Rasa, which I think that you could farm yourself uh, through the rituals. If you don't want to do that, feel free to go ahead and purchase one. They're usually about 20 to 30 chaos. Just know that. But a six link is incredibly important, and it's going to be the most of your damage. Uh, as you saw earlier, we are putting our skeleton mages in our six link and our specters in our helmet. So moving on to the next one here is that Victorio's shield. Uh, very good. These are actually usually pretty cheap, anywhere between 5 and maybe 12 chaos, and they have some good stats. They've got life, they've got lightning resist, and a little bit of chaos resist as well. Uh, so not too bad for your minions, because that's not going to affect you, but that is pretty solid for your minions. So moving on to the next one here this is the medium cluster jewels uh, which again you you're not using those in this budget build but i wanted to go ahead and throw these in here for you guys in case you wanted to start crafting them uh, if you've progressed a little bit further than say a quote unquote league starter build and it's time to kind of step up your gear you can craft on some of these medium cluster jewels uh, so for example on here i might suggest renewal and feasting fiends and I have filtered this out for you guys. I've put all everything in here to essentially give you exactly what you need to craft that jewel the easiest way possible with the fewest amount of currency uh, to do so. So go ahead and search that if you want to craft on the medium cluster jewels. And same thing here for the large cluster jewels. This is exactly what you need for a renewal jewel, which is going to be the best jewel for our build and i would also say even something like the attack speed um, the 25 percent increased effect is also going to be very good uh, and it, i would probably even say maybe chaos resistance uh, on this would be pretty solid as well like this one right here that's probably about 12 percent chaos resistance so it's not bad if you get that as well uh, alongside like renewal or something uh, so not too bad so check this out if you guys want to craft on a large cluster here's the link to it Next one is the super cheap Darkness and Throne. It's like one chaos. Uh, and I think you guys can even solo cell farm this one with the new Atlas changes uh, since you're going to be able to target farm Abyss. So you could probably get one of these yourself if you really wanted to. And definitely like on solo cell found if you're playing that. I, I feel like you can get one of these a little bit easier than you used to be able to. And then for the jewels that you're going to put in your Darkness and Throne, you're going to want to click this one here and it's going to give you all the jewels that you want. So it's got at least level or at least 20 life and it's also got the minions deal increased damage if you've used a minion skill recently. Just those two sats alone are usually pretty cheap, only a couple chaos. I wouldn't suggest crafting that yourself. It's usually cheaper to go ahead and purchase one for a few chaos. 
Uh, do note that if you want to spend a little bit more currency, what I would suggest is kind of right here, actually. Um, added lightning damage is very, very solid. The Also, the one with uh, minion cast speed is also very solid. Uh, those two are very good. You could also get something like the minions have a chance to taunt on hit or minions have a chance to blind on hit. But I prefer to get damage on these instead of like defense or utility so that's just kind of my style so moving on to the next one here is a super cheap six link that you can actually get as a step up from your tabula rasa these usually cost about 30 chaos i would say on the first couple days of league and then from there it just goes down and you can probably pick up a pretty good one between 15 and 20 chaos and the reason it is so cheap uh, is because they're corrupted I've set the filters up here to basically give you exactly what you need for your colors most people don't sell uh, these corrupted six links for very much because most people don't buy them because of the corrupted factor where it's, it's hard to change the colors. But what we can get around that if we specifically specify that we want these colors. So this is our colors for our skeleton mages, the four blue and the two green. So if we just search for that specifically, then we're going to get some pretty cheap body armors and they're going to have a decent amount of life and resistance as, as well based off of the filter that I put in there so uh, it's just a good way to get an easy cheap six link moving on to our last item here is again that hu unending hunger I have this in the last place over here because while it is incredibly important for your DPS it's gonna be the most expensive uh, like I said anywhere between 50 chaos I would think upwards of 150 chaos somewhere in there I'm guessing it's gonna be on that lower end because not many people are gonna be playing specters It might even be lower than 50 so we'll have to see uh, but it is uh, so much damage So that's definitely something that you want to pick up once you get into maybe mid yellow tier maps And you definitely should have this in your in red tier maps uh, it's going to carry you so hard. Once you get this, it, it carries you uh, by itself while you're mapping. So it's very, very solid. But yeah, that's really all I have for this one, guys. Let's go ahead and go back to our path of building. Um, I think it's going to be a solid league starter. You're not using any cluster jewels. Your, your gear is like under 30 chaos for the whole setup. You have good life. You have good defenses. Uh, and on top of that, you have some pretty good... Uh, some pretty good damage. You have a clear speed minion with the mages that you could swap out a gem and it turns into a bossing mage, a uh, skeleton mage. And then you just have those slave drivers, the race specters here, doing 2.5 million damage as well. Um, so I, I think it's going to work out pretty well. Uh, I know that a lot of people are scared because the, the, the specters got nerfed so heavily, and I'm right there with you. I think it was a pretty crazy nerf, and honestly, I think some type of nerf needed to be had but i think they went way too overboard and i think it really punished casual players uh, but certainly more so than the in-game players like i said earlier i have that specter build that i'm going to turn this build into that in-game specter build and it's got 34 million dps right so that's an absurd amount of dps uh, so those nerfs didn't really affect me too much obviously i went down from 80 to 34 and that's pretty insane but at 34 million DPS, I'm still destroying the entire game, right? So it's not as big of a deal for me. Whereas a casual player that's never going to get up to there or, you know, they're just chilling they're They don't have the best gear. Um, it's going to be a little bit harder for them. And that's why I did this specific build where not only do we have specters, but I also brought in the mages. Um, to do a little bit more damage and to kind of spread out the damage between single target and clear speed to make the whole build just feel a little bit smoother. Yeah, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this guide and you guys learned something. Uh, this was the last guide of my night, so you guys are going to have to forgive me a little bit for uh, maybe not the 100% best guide. I put out five guides today, uh, so lots of League Starter guides, and I, I do plan on coming out with at least one more uh, tomorrow before the League starts. And just so you guys know, I will be playing a Dominating Blow um, Guardian, so I'm pretty excited for that. As I mentioned earlier, I do stream on Twitch, so if you guys ever have any questions about this build or any of my other builds, definitely hang out uh, in the chat, ask away. I'm always happy to help you guys with your questions. Uh, I actually enjoy teaching people, so I've been playing the game a long time, so definitely come in there, ask as many questions as you want. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for this one, guys. I will catch you all in the next one.